Honorable laureates, your excellencies, deputy speaker of the Swedish parliament, ambassadors, members of parliament, esteemed colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's a great honor for me to be here tonight. My name is Abira Sahlani, member of the Swedish parliament, representing the Center Party and also member of the Committee for the Right Livelihood Award. The Hindu newspaper in India recently profiled her remarkable life journey from a refugee to healer. As a doctor, an educator, a minister, and a human rights advocate, she has constantly stood up to promote the rights of women, children, and the most marginalized in her country. The influential Foreign Policy magazine listed her in their 2012 list of top 100 global thinkers for having rung the alarm bell about the dismal state of women participation in the modern day Afghanistan. I want now, and I have the great honor, to welcome a beacon of hope and a beacon of courage for women and all those who aspire for peace, justice, and equality in Afghanistan. Dr. Seema Samar, the floor is yours. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Honorable Member of the Parliament, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, fellow laureates, dear friends, good evening to all of you. Without any doubt, I feel extremely honored and privileged to receive this year's Right Livelihood Award and find myself among a multitude of dedicated and inspiring people who have been struggling for a human being to enjoy a peaceful and decent life. This prestigious recognition is not solely for me and my work, but for my people and my country, and particularly for Afghan women who have been striving for a decent and dignified life. It is for sure not an easy task to fight for women's rights and human rights in a country where women still are considered to be second-class citizens although it, we have equal rights in the Constitution. It is indeed very motivating for me and my fellow women's rights activists, advocate, working toward the creation of an environment free of violence and discrimination. An obvious peculiarity of our globalized world is indifference to injustice, discrimination, and oppressive behavior of dictators, which in any part of our common earth cannot be tolerated. In the same manner, the dedication of human rights defenders and promoter of democracy and rule of law, whose work is often fraught with great risk, should not remain unnoticed. This award is an affirmation of our struggle. As an Afghan woman defending the basic human rights of my country women, in countrymen, in a land where human rights was once a taboo, has never been a smooth path. Though we are still a long way away from having our desire for human rights fulfilled, we have come a long way to reach this level. Risk, threats, intimidation, discrimination on one hand, and despairing reaction from a male-dominated society and prevailing conservative attitude on the other. Has been a structural challenge, my, uh, my fellow human rights companion, and I continue to face. However, now human rights have been turned into a national debate and discourse in the country. Now one is openly talking about torture, which though not abolished, it, it is not visible in common as it was before. Now no one is burying cases of killing, 
in rape along with the victims and hiding them in the grave. Earlier, no one could even dare to talk about such issues. In a country like Afghanistan, where there is low rate of literacy and surge of poverty in years of marginalization, people and victims' family are today talking about the violence and abuses that they were subject to and are airing their voices for justice. This is indeed a pleasant outcome of our effort and advocacy. As a matter of fact, what has kept me motivated is both the continued suffering of my people and my strong belief in what I am engaged with and striving for. For me, the best moment is to see a younger girl and a boy who lost his, her family and have no one to look after them, whether during the former Soviet uh, Union occupation or civil war periods. But now they are graduate of universities and have a steady job and income. I had too many such kids and still have at the shelters that I support. It is fascinating to see them coming to me and saying, mother, I have a job and I want to follow your path and upholding human rights and continuing my journey working towards well-being and peaceful life for my war-hit people. It is for sure very difficult to comp compensate the opportunity loss in post-conflict, in conflict situation, situations like my country, but it is, it is promising to have somebody to continue walking the talk. For the Afghan woman who has never saw a medical doctor in her entire life, happens to have a missed abortion, she would have been dead if she would not have reached me. She did survive after two days of journey, arriving at the hospital that I have built. This is a tiny support that I could have afford to her. After 20 years, she is always striving to see me when I went back to their area. She came to see me and brought me some sweets and said that I had saved her life. Hundreds of such cases have give me the satisfaction that I have at least done a positive work for my country. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, this prestigious recognition would indeed further boost the moral of Afghan women and men, and particularly rose this the spirit of human rights defenders in the country. It enhanced their effort and commitment to work for rule of law. Democracy in human rights. This is for my people and my country. This award is a clear indication that we all have a shared vision for a world to be free of injustice, discrimination, and the people suffering no one should tolerate injustice, and we should all treat injustice anywhere as injustice everywhere. This is to prevent further loss of opportunity and for the young generation to enjoy a lasting peace, sustainable development in human security in its broadest sense. We have no time for further enmities in witnessing people suffering, and we must make our voices louder and louder for scared and noble causes toward a sustainable future for all humankind. We must act today as our common future depends, as great Gandhi said, on what, what we do today. At the end, I would like to quote from a poem of an Afghan poet saying, our life is too short for our friendship. How come people can spare time for animosity? Thank you for your attention and your solidarity.